Hello golfers, Eric Brzezewski here. I'm gonna recap a gears session and a lesson I gave to a junior recently. The junior was about a 14 handicap last year. This summer got down to about a four and competed in the Pennsylvania State Championship. So he's made some nice improvements and has done a good job to keep improving. Got a lot better in this lesson as well. I'm gonna play these back. They play back a little slow, so I'm going to actually kind of scroll through it myself. So it'll be a little bit stuttery. Otherwise it would take two minutes to play back. You can pay attention to some things. We're not gonna pay particular attention to this specific video. This is an early swing. The E means early swing. L means a later swing in the session. Okay, and here's another view of those. These are slightly different swings. These are flipped around. The later swing is on the left. The early swing is on the right. I'm just gonna play these back. I've marked the center of the pelvis and the center of the ribs, just with vertical lines in each. This is an overhead view of both golfers. They'll be synced up at impact, but aren't synced up during the backswing. What you'll notice is that both golfers will shift to the right a little bit on the backswing. Later in the backswing, they'll start to re-shift forward or recenter, And then throughout the downswing, they'll continue forward, okay, reaching a forward position with their weight over their front foot. So there they've gotten almost back to where they started and will now I'm gonna flash forward pretty quickly throughout the downswing. Again, he's a four handicap, so even the pattern on the right is not bad. It was something that we wanted to improve, okay? Good, let me stop that. Let me bring these back <clears throat> and talk briefly about uh, shifting, okay? Everyone has to be, Every good player gets forward pretty well here at impact, okay? That's that's a given. You know, every good player is somewhere up there at impact, okay? So that's fine. Um, I teach good players to shift a little this way during the backswing, spiral up from there, shift forward and down a little bit on the downswing, continue forward and down before kind of dramatically, you know, thrusting up around impact and into the follow through, okay? And I almost call that the vineyard vines kind of pattern, right? If you trace the center mass, it'll trace a similar pattern to that. Uh, the problem is, and one of the things we worked on primarily in this golf swing is that this pattern for this golfer got more like this pattern. It got very big, okay? You're gonna see a lot of shifting in this pattern here in this video, okay? So even if I just stop at, you know, different parts of this backswing, you're gonna see 4.4 and 2.9 inches, 1.2 and 1.1 inches, okay? You're gonna start to see much bigger shifts on the left than on the right. You're gonna start to see some other things too on the left versus the right, but there we go there. Around the top, change of direction, right? You're going to see he's essentially still farther back on the left in the early swing and has effectively gotten back close to zero on the right. You're going to see a shift forward, okay? Again, they sync up at impact, so there's slightly different timing here. You're going to see 4.1, 4.4, but 5.5 and 4.5, so those numbers are a good bit bigger on the left, even though they're a little bit earlier in the downswing, relatively. This golfer had a good pattern uh, with regards to the pelvis trailing the ribs and then flipping that position into here, okay? Around six or so. So 4.2, 6.6, 3.0, 5.5. So a lot more motion, a lot bigger 
shifts on the left in the early swings than on the right. Let me pull up some separate videos and we can go into this in a little bit more detail. Here we have a face on look and I've added some extra lines. I added the body lines, which we're mostly gonna look at this virtual spine. Here it says 88 degrees and I know the numbers on the right are a little small so I can read them off to you. That says 94 degrees. 90 degrees is vertical, four degrees means four degrees of tilt away. That's through the shoulders and down through the pelvis. So it's basically on that line. And this is 88 degrees, so it's two degrees toward the target. So it's basically that line there. So you can see he's set up with his ribs a little bit ahead of his pelvis on the left and the opposite on the right. The, he's, he's basically centered on the right, I should say. He's stacked on top of each other. His uh, ribs are, are right on top of his pelvis, okay? And we made setup changes later in the golf swing because I did not want him to worry about feeling a bunch of stuff at setup. You'll notice we changed the ball position as well, okay? I'll cover those later, but we made those changes very late in the lesson because I didn't want him worrying about that stuff while he was trying to change this. Okay, so at setup, his ribs are ahead of his pelvis, okay? They're both zeroed out because that's how Gears measures this stuff. There's not a global reference point to any measurement there. So it's not gonna tell us that the hips are one inch back of the ribs here. They're both gonna be zeroed out. But then relatively, you can see when he gets to 4.4 and 2.9, the pelvis, which already started back probably an inch or so, has now moved another inch and a half more than the ribs have. So that gap has gotten quite wide here, okay? That's about the maximum sway, but again, 4.4 inches versus what we'll see on the right was about 2.1, okay? So on the right, we get to about 2.1, and then the, the ribs actually get to 1.2 a little bit earlier. They flash there real quick, you know, early. But about 2.2 and about 1.1. There's 2.2 and see that goes to 1.0. So it was 2.2 and 1.1, okay? But they happen early, uh, before the club gets to two, okay, in both cases. You'll notice this virtual spine has already gone to 10 degrees, 10 and a half, deg nine and a half degrees. It's 80.5. This has stayed at 91.8 degrees. So he's staying fairly vertical here. Remember, it's through the shoulders. So that's why it's through the shoulders to the hips. That's why the ribs will look a little different. Like the, they'll look like they're like this a little tiny bit. Nothing like we see over here though. Okay. In that difference. As we get to here, you're going to see that virtual spine and we go to 75.3. And if we stop this one at about the same place or the lowest number it gets, we'll see 86.5. So only three and a half degrees versus 15 degrees almost, right? 14.7 degrees there. And this golfer you would describe as almost like a reverse pivot, except he doesn't do the downswing stuff where he falls away from the target. And this golfer is still fairly vertical, okay? And so that's one point that's important. When you shift, if you set up vertically, shift everything back an inch or two and stay vertical, okay? Shift everything back and stay vertical. What you don't wanna do is shift your pelvis back a bunch because then your ribs will stay and your head will stay forward almost to counterbalance you, okay? So not only did he shift too much, he kind of shifted mostly with his hips and forgot about his pelvis, or sorry, forgot about his ribs. So at the top of his backswing, he was about 0 0.4 and 1.2 or so, and the numbers are pretty similar on the right. They're about 0 0.4 and about 1.2, I mean, they or 1.0, 1.1, somewhere in there. So he gets back to about the same place, but obviously on the left, he shifted way back and then got back almost to center. On the right, he shifted back less and got back to about the same place, but required much less shifting of both the ribs and the pelvis. If we bring him down to impact, we're gonna see these numbers are 6.6 .6 and 4.2. These numbers are gonna be smaller, 4.9 and 2.6. So 1.6 inches less with the rib cage, 1.7 inches less with the pelvis, okay? 
if you zoom out and just look at the size of, and these avatars are the same size because I've recorded from the same screen and they're zoomed into the same level. Here is the total amount of his sway on the left, right? I'm just, it's, I'm just drawing a line underneath that shift pattern, right? Underneath the trace on the ground. You can see it right above the line that I've drawn. There's how much he swayed there and there's how much he swayed here, okay? It's a much more economical shift on the right. Both back is smaller and forward is smaller, okay? We didn't talk much about the backswing. It's not smaller for any reason other than the fact that he didn't need to go as far forward, okay? If you look at him at impact, if I take him to impact, you're gonna notice again that this vertical line on the outside of his foot, he gets forward plenty well, right? Those pictures almost look identical if you ignored the ball position and stuff, right? He's 105 degrees here, so 15 degrees of axis tilt. And he's 102 here, so 12 degrees, so almost the same there. Uh, his thigh is actually slightly through that posture line on the left, or sorry, on the right. And they look almost identical. So he got to almost the same position while moving around a whole lot less. So this really tightened up his club face control as far as striking the ball on the center of the face, both horizontally, toe to heel, but also vertically. And that's where he struggled, if you remember. On the left, he also hit down a little bit too much and had a little bit too much shaft lean, and he gained about one and a half miles per hour on the right. How and why? Let's start to get into that. Okay, so how and why? First thing you'll notice, obviously it's set up. He's two degrees toward the target, he's four degrees away. He's stacked here, okay, they're vertical. He's not here. Those are, his hips are, are back of his chest, okay? Ball position is another thing. Again, we did this late in the lesson. We moved the ball forward. If you look at this part of the swing, this is very common pattern among good players. You'll see at around six, his ribs and pelvis cover both sides of the golf ball. And then at around, sorry, if I said six there, I meant five. At around five, his left arm parallel, they cover both sides of the golf ball. And around six to 6.5, they split the other side and they flipped. The ribs are now behind the pelvis. He did this before, okay? You'll see he did this pattern. He's a good player. He has the same pattern. So there, if you picture the ball here, you're gonna see that he has that same pattern, right? It happens a little bit later because he's so intent on going forward, he doesn't do as much of the rotation through there, but he has that same pattern. That's one of the reasons why it was obvious to move the ball forward. Before he had about 12 degrees of forward shaft lean and was hitting down on the ball about eight degrees angle of attack. Afterward, he had only eight degrees of forward shaft lean, which is plenty and was hitting about four degrees down on the ball. PGA Tour average with a seven iron is about four and a half. So that's, those are both good numbers. We could have moved the ball position forward just for that reason, uh, but that's one of the things that happened. So we moved the ball forward and they actually moved forward with his body less and yet gets to about the same position. So how did he do this? Okay, like I said, we did the setup stuff later. If you notice, one of the big differences is what he looks like and what he does by this point in the swing, okay? He's a lot more vertical here and he's a lot more tilty here. He's already added 10 degrees or so of tilt, eight degrees from where he started there, and he's only lost less than two degrees of tilt here, okay, by having the hips go. So his feeling was actually that his sternum, the front of his chest there, was the only thing that went back here. He felt like he was turning back almost like that. Like he was bent forward at the waist a little bit and was shifting his chest back, but not really moving his hips back. That both economized the motion, made it smaller, and kept him closer to this vertical kind of nature here, okay? Less of this 75.3 degree spine tilt, right? Much more vertical, that gap stays a lot smaller, okay? Then, because he had moved off the golf ball less, he had to build far less momentum. He's a good player. He knows he has to get forward to hit the ball. He knows what his left leg and left side and everything should feel like to hit the ball. So he knows how far he has to get forward to hit the ball. He knows what this 
position has to feel like. He just had less to go there. And so since he wasn't starting from so far back, he didn't have to go forward as fast, right? It was a more economical motion, less motion, less translation speed, less just forward shifting speed. So that meant he could use his muscles to turn a little bit more. That combined with the ball being a little bit further forward led to a one and a half to two mile an hour increase in club head speed, even though he was feeling a bunch of new things and probably not swinging quite at full speed. He still had several shots that were faster and very few shots that were even the same speed or slower than what he was recording previously, even though he felt like he was swinging softer to try to feel some of these things out. Okay. So um, if we look back at that original face on video, again, you'll see that these lines are much smaller on the right than on the left. Okay. You're going to see again that these numbers, they're not quite synced up. They're synced up again at impact. We see 1.2 and 1.1 here. We see 4.3 and 2.9 there already. Again, we get to 4.4 and 2.9 on this one. Another, It's a different after swing or later swing than we saw before, but 1.3 and 1.0. These lines are staying much more vertical. Notice, notice this, right? So he's not shifting with primarily his hips. Again, he felt like he was shifting only his ribs on the right. Still that same good pattern where the ribs overtake the pelvis slightly and then they flip around the other way. They happen a little bit later on the left because he's, he's his body is worried more about getting forward. Okay. But again, very similar impact conditions with a lot less motion. Three inches, 5.5 .5 versus 4.2 and 6.6. .6. And again, that's relative to where each of these started. I'm going to finish up with a combined view of a lot of videos from different face on views, but you're going to see they're kind of cool. They're overlaid in, in line. So here's a video that you've seen a few times. I'm just going to let these play. So here's the side by side. These aren't necessarily the same swings. You can see the pelvis going on the left. Very vertical on the right. Rib cage overtakes, hips overtake. Okay, good. Next are gonna be in line. So this kind of orients the feet in a similar position. The stance width got a little bit narrower later on. And again, the timing was a little bit different. But the blue is still the Later swing, the yellow is still the early swing. All right, so a lot more motion. You saw near the top of the backswing, you see how far outside of the blue guy, the yellow guy is. You can see, if you look at these lines, there's the virtual spines, right, in both of these cases. All right, that one actually. And then you can see how different those are, right? There, there's the one at the top. Here's the blue one at the top. Okay, there's those two virtual spines. And you can still see how far back that yellow guy is than the blue guy, and then how much further forward yellow guy has to get than blue guy. Right, even with a ball position that's further back. Okay, the blue guy's posture line is right here the yellow guys is here. So again, relative to each other, they get to about the same place because you can see blue guys posture line, yellow guys posture line. So they get forward relatively the same. The last one is an overlay. And it's important to note when you see the overlay that it lines up the ball position. So the yellow guy is going to be set much further forward already. But notice yellow guy is actually farther right than blue guy despite Look at where his feet are, right? His feet are much further forward because his ball is further back. Look at his head, right? And it's going to stay ahead of the blue guy's head quite a bit. And now he's yellow guy's much further forward.
you would expect that, of course. So again, you see a lot more motion out of the yellow guy than the blue guy. Yellow guy, despite starting further forward, is already further back. You see yellow on this side of both of those legs early on. Okay, so to recap, while it's important to shift, okay, if you're a good player, I like to see a vertical shift, you stay vertical and shift backward during the backswing an inch or two, okay? It doesn't have to be much more than that. It's important that you stay vertical and not be tilting like this with your pelvis, out racing your ribs or your head a bunch, right? You stay vertical, shift an inch or two, recenter or start to move forward before you reach the top of your backswing and then you can continue forward kind of smoothly and continuously throughout the downswing like that okay you can adjust ball position and setup to help you achieve these things as we did with this player again i did them later in the lesson so that we didn't have to worry about too much right look at the difference in how much these dots have moved right versus where they started Start there. Look at how much they move already. That's a lot. It's more than you need. Okay. So while it's important to shift, the shift is small. Okay. And that's the emphasis here. That shift is a very small motion to the right. It's a very early motion to the right. It's an inch or two. Then you start forward. You close that gap back to zero ish around the top and you get to two to five, depending on whether you're talking about your ribs or your pelvis, somewhere during the downswing, okay? And that's all it is. I hope this has helped. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks for watching.